Hello everyone, my name is Anna, Anna Lundberg, and I'm a success coach and business strategist. And in this video, I'm gonna give you five exercises that will help you to get more clarity on what it is that you really want to get out of your career. Now, I wanna make sure that you're making the most of your time here and that you're getting what you need. So you're definitely in the right place uh, to watch this video if you've quit your job because you wanna find something that's more meaningful, something that will have you jumping out of bed in the morning with excitement, but maybe you're struggling with all the different options and possibilities, you're getting confused by all the well-meaning advice that people are giving you, and you're feeling the pressures of earning a salary and saving for a pension and all those things. Or perhaps if you're still in your job, I'm certainly not going to try to persuade you to quit without any kind of plan, but you're obviously watching this video for a reason and I'm going to be giving you some concrete tools and exercises that you can work on to start moving towards a bit more clarity on what might be next for you. Also, I of course don't wanna be wasting your time, so I'm gonna say that this isn't for you if you love your current job and you have no desire whatsoever to change or perhaps you do want to change, but you're already 100% clear on what you want to do and how you're going to do that. Um, of course, it's also not for you if you're looking for an exact blueprint or a get-rich-quick solution. I have to say that because I'm afraid I'm not going to give you that in this video. So, assuming that you are in the right place, in this video I'm going to be taking you through five specific things, exercises, that you can do already today in order to start to move forwards and get more clarity on what that dream career might look like. Um, talking first a little bit about why that clarity is so important and at the end of the video in addition to those exercises I'll also give you a couple of other resources and links that are available to help you to move forwards. So before I get into the meat of the video of course I want to tell you a bit more about who I am so you understand why I'm even here talking to you about this and I believe that we can reach our fullest potential and make our biggest contribution in the world when we find work that matches our values, our interests and our individual strengths. And I'm really passionate about helping people do this. I speak at schools and universities to help young people set out on the right career path in the first place. I help people who are already established in a career that, although outwardly successful, just doesn't feel right. And I help them transition from usually an unfulfilling corporate job into building a meaningful business that gives them more freedom, flexibility, and ultimately fulfillment across different areas of their lives. So not just in the area of work and career. And I have always been interested in careers. I've spent a lot of time reading and learning about my own choices as well as other people's. And I have been through this transition myself. And now I'm happy to say that I've built my very own business. I'm a published author with lots of articles online and more books on the way. I've traveled the world. Um, and the truth is that I couldn't have even imagined any of these things just a few years ago. So going back in time, way, way back in time, <laughs> I graduated from high school when I was 17. And as I recently rediscovered in my school yearbook, I was voted most likely to succeed by my classmates. Um, so I graduated valedictorian, which means that I had the highest grade point average in my year. I got awards, I think, for physics, English, Swedish. I studied PPE at Oxford, so philosophy, politics and economics. And then I went on to do a master's degree at the Graduate Institute in Geneva, where former Secretary General of the UN, Kofi Annan, studied. And then I accepted a job at a big name multinational company and was given a fantastic managerial job with a great salary. Um, so all in all, I think my classmates would probably have agreed that I was pretty successful at that stage. But <laughs> fundamentally, I just wasn't engaged and excited by the work that I was doing. I felt there was something more, as they say, you know, whatever that might be. Um, and I had a list of dreams that I wasn't getting any closer to. I wanted to travel the world, I wanted to write a book and so on. So in 2013, I asked for a sabbatical and I travelled alone across South America for three months. And halfway through that trip, I called up HR and I quit my job. Um, but during those three months, I did a lot of reading. I did soul searching, talking to people, reflecting by myself. And although there's only so much thinking and analysing that you can do, um, and it's important to start to really explore and try things and see what you really like, not just sit there back at home with a pen and paper. Um, there are certain things that you can do, in my experience, to start to reimagine what a new career, a new vision of success might look like for you. So in this video, I wanted to share with you a few of those exercises. Now, before getting into those exercises, I do want to cover quickly why this is so important, why getting clear on what you actually want to achieve is so crucial to going on to actually achieve it. Um, and I often refer to that conversation that you may know from um, Alice in Wonderland, where the Cheshire cat asks, well, rather, Alice asks the Cheshire cat where she are, um, which way she should go. And he answers that it doesn't matter because she doesn't know where she wants to get to. 
Um, and another good quote is by Lucius Annius Seneca, who says, if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favourable. So we often have those vague dreams and ideas, but we're just not sure if we really want them or maybe we have different dreams and we're not sure which one is the right one. But if we don't know what we want, how can we ever work out how we're going to get there? And based on what I've seen, this really is the number one reason why most people don't achieve their dream career or any dreams, in fact, full stop. Now, I talk a lot about reimagining success, which when it comes down to it, simply means achieving your aim or purpose. So it's really up to you to define what that aim or purpose is. And it's important, I think, to forget all about those traditional or conventional images and the shoulds and create a new and more meaningful definition for you personally. So if success is getting the big house and car and prestigious job title, then of course quitting or getting fired from that job is failure. But if success for you means lifelong learning and enjoying your work and spending more time with family and friends, that gives you a whole different spin on things. So I'd say we need to banish that vision of a corporate ladder and forge our own path. And that path may not go up in even steps. It may go sideways, you might go round 360 degrees, it may go forwards in a huge leap and it may even go backwards a few steps. But this is your path and you're taking it in the direction of the dream that you're going to have defined. And finally, before I get into the five exercises, the five things you can do today to redefine success, I want to really encourage you now to dream big. Don't limit yourself at this stage. Don't edit your ideas before you've even started. Oh, I'll never get that job, or I'm not going to make any money doing that, or there's no point in trying. There's plenty of time to be realistic and pragmatic later on um, and to check that your ideas are feasible and look into them properly. But for now, you have to start big, absolutely huge. You know what they say, if you aim for the stars, you might end up in the treetops. And you know what? Some people sometimes even end up in the stars. So dream big at this stage. And with that in mind, I want to give you those five things that you can already do today to get that clarity. So go ahead and grab a pen and paper um, if you haven't already got that out. Um, I will go through quite quickly, so you probably can't do the exercises right now, but uh, make a note of them. And of course, you can come back to the video later on. Um, and then you can spend more time doing the exercises another day. Um, but for each of these exercises, um, as I said, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time here, but I do want to give you a few different tools um, so you can go off and reflect properly after you've watched this. And, you know, different exercises will spark different things for each of you. And it may be that one of them or all five of them sparks something meaningful for you. So do sort of give them a go and, and see what comes up in the different exercises that I'm suggesting. So here we go, straight into it. Number one, give yourself advice from the future. Now, one of my favourite exercises over the last few years has been to imagine that you're sitting in that rocking chair in the home for the elderly in years to come. You're 100 years old, you're looking back on a long, long life and you're asking yourself, what needs to have happened for me to feel that my life was successful? What do I need to have done for me to not have any regrets? And I, you may have heard me talk about before Bronnie Ware's book on the top five regrets of the dying. Um, and those are quite interesting ones to look at um, if you can't think of your own. But they include, I wish I'd let myself be, ha be happier. I wish I hadn't worked so much. I wish I'd had the courage to live a life that was true to myself and not that expected of others. But, you know, just try to imagine what the older, wiser you would tell your younger self. What advice would you give yourself? And you might already be having some thoughts now, so if so, jot them down so you don't forget. But as I said, I'd encourage you to set aside a few minutes later today to do these exercises properly. So that's number one. Number two, imagine your ideal day. So imagine your alarm clock rings, or maybe it doesn't ring. You get up. What time is it when you're getting up? Where are you? What does the room look like? Who are you with? What can you smell? What can you see when you look out of your window? What are you having for breakfast? Then walking through your day, think about all the details that come to mind. You know, are you indoors or outdoors? What are you working on? How are you feeling? So again, take some time later today, close your eyes and really give yourself the time to think and feel and smell what that ideal day might look like for you. And based on your answers, you can really learn a lot, I find, and it may well surprise you. It may be very different to your current day and very different to um, what you're doing currently in your job and perhaps the jobs that you're considering at the moment. So for, for me, for example, my ideal day would be something like going for a run by the ocean, cooking yummy healthy food, sharing a glass of wine with my partner, with a friend, you know, reading, listening to some podcasts, 
meeting people, um, really quite general, quite basic things. But of course, you can get as detailed as you want to. And personally, when it comes to the alarm clock, I originally rebelled against that and I didn't want to set a clock after so many um, so many years of having to get up early. But I actually now do enjoy getting up early and, and I do some exercise and then I have a delicious breakfast and, and get to work. So, you know, it, you may be surprised again as to, to what you do and don't want, but try to imagine that ideal day, what you'd like to do with, with no constraints whatsoever. As I said, dream big and then we can be more pragmatic later on. Number three, define what's important to you. And when I work with clients, I almost always start with this exercise. Um, And it sounds a bit strange, and it definitely wasn't something that I ever thought of doing before I did my coach training. But your values are really at the heart of who you are and what you do. So if there's a disconnect between your most important values and what you're doing, you're fundamentally going to be unhappy. It's that simple. Um, But on the other hand, if you anchor your goals and your values, now that is where the magic happens. So some questions that can help here. In your life, when were you the most proud of yourself? When did you feel happiest? And what was true in those situations? So were you alone? Were you working in a team? Were you at work even? Or were you with your family? Were you with your friends? What were you doing? What's what's in common with all those different um, times in your life when you felt proud or happy? And some other questions. What do you go out of your way to do? What do you go out of your way not to do? So things that you absolutely hate doing things that you um, really love doing and think are really important. So we're trying to get at what really makes your heart beat faster. You know, when do you find that you're in that place that we call flow, when hours can pass and you don't even notice um, that time is passing because you just love what you're doing so much. And when I initially did this exercise back in 2013, I came up with three values at the time. Authenticity, so being really true to myself, tying into that number one um, regret of the dying personal development and growth. So continuous lifelong learning has always been a value for me and freedom. And I think that's a big one for a lot of us who are choosing to leave the corporate nine to five to create more freedom and flexibility in our lives. And these have actually now evolved and been refined. So, you know, I do encourage you to come back to these over time. Um, I've now anchored my core values in everything I do and I've got five um, right now. So they've evolved into curiosity, courage, trust in myself, balance and self-compassion. So those are my values and I try to keep those really sort of at the front of my mind, um, as I said, in everything I do, both in work and in personal life. Super strengths. (laughs) So number four, what are you good at? Because it's all very well to say you're interested in something, but you need to really be good at it. Because if you're good, then you'll usually enjoy it more, you'll be more committed to working hard and ultimately you're going to deliver better results. And when you do this, think beyond your obvious job title. So, you know, if you're a social media, for example, a social media manager, for example, you guess you can do social media management. But, you know, what does that mean concretely, first of all? Are you coming up with a content calendar, writing the posts, running Facebook ads, responding to customers' questions and so on? And secondly, you know, what else did you do? Think beyond the most obvious job description. So did you present to management? Did you have to get different stakeholders to agree? Did you have to negotiate with the design team to get the assets you needed? And also think both in terms of those hard skills, again, the more obvious ones, and the less tangible soft skills that are equally, if not more important. So, you know, communication and presentation um, and, and all those and collaboration and those things that perhaps can't necessarily be taught, but are certainly incredibly important. And your personal strengths as well. So your unique personality strengths that people give you positive feedback on um, that really make you different to other people. And finally, and for me, this is perhaps the biggest driver, the most important factor as to whether or not a job is meaningful. And that is actually believing that your job has a positive impact on other people, that you're really making a difference. In so many office jobs, we're so far removed from the end users of our products and services, we just can't see that impact. We're sitting at our desks, you know, doing a PowerPoint presentation, Excel file, and we're just not seeing how that's making the world a better place in any way. So the final question for you is, how would you like to make a meaningful impact in the lives of others? And it doesn't have to be big gestures. It doesn't have to be saving the world. You know, you don't have to work at the UN or become a firefighter or a therapist or something as obvious as that. You can have an impact in all sorts of ways through art or music, through adventure and sports or through supporting struggling businesses and entrepreneurs. You know, you can really craft a job in which you find that meaning. Maybe you care about veganism and animal rights or children's education, gender equality, food waste, reducing our use of plastic and its impact on the environment. 
So this is really going to add meaning to your work and it's also going to position you in the broader context of society where you're making a positive contribution and not just being a drain on the planet's resources. And that, I hope you agree, is an important consideration. So there we go, the five exercises. Um, if you want to take a screenshot or make sure you've noted them down for later. As I said, different exercises may spark different things for each of you and you may also get new insights if you come back to it another time. And before I finish, I do want to give you a couple of other next steps and links, as I said, um, so that you can continue the exploration after this video. So first of all, you're very welcome, if you haven't already done so, to join our little Facebook group, One Step Outside. I'm in there regularly sharing tips and videos, and you also have the support of the rest of the tribe that's there. Like-minded people who are going through a similar transition and exploration as yourself, and who are incredibly supportive. And then if you're really getting stuck, if you're struggling to work out, you know, what... Uh, what, is, is, what it is that you really want to do and how you're going to move forwards with that, then I'd love to invite you to a free consultation call. Um, it's a 30-minute conversation in which we really look at what it is you're trying to achieve and what's getting in the way and specifically focus on giving you at least one step, one action step that you can take in order to move forwards. And I find creating that little bit of action, um, that bit of momentum is what's going to propel you forwards and before you know it, you will have absolutely transformed your life if that's what it is you want to do. So you can find out more about that call and book the call as well on my website, onestepoutside.com. And there we go. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I look forward to seeing you over in the Facebook group, maybe to chatting with you and helping you figure out your one step. And I most of all wish you the very best as you take your steps towards your own definition of success. Bye for now.